A lot of the most recent studies on learning show that you actually learn things much better when you pull them out from your brain more frequently rather than trying to stuff as much in there as possible and seeing what sticks, which is the way that most people go about learning things. What is up guys, it's Samad here and the reason why I'm making this video today is because I'm actually about to sit an exam myself and a colleague of mine was telling me about how stressed she is and how she's failed an exam in the past and I'm usually someone who does very well on exams and to be honest when I walk into the test I'm usually not that nervous and I'll tell you why it's because I know at that point that I've done everything that I possibly can to perform well on that exam. So no matter what happens, I can look back and think I had no regrets. Either, you know, I, I do very well and I can learn from uh, the study strategy and how it worked, or I didn't do so well and I can look back and think, okay, what could I do differently for next time? So either way, you will develop from it. Understand, you know, resitting is not where people want to be. And so in this video, I'm gonna share how I ranked second in Manchester Medical School's hardest exam and how my study strategy differed to my study partner at the time who ended up getting about, let's say 13% less on that test than I did, even though we went through all of the exact same content. So first I'm going to tell you that tale about uh, me and my study partner. In Manchester Medical School we have a certain type of learning called problem-based learning. That means every week we get given a case and we have to generate a list of questions that we need to answer by the end of that week. So you have to go through content and then pre present what you found to the people in the group. I used to go through all of these this content with a study partner of mine and we would basically spend a few hours each day uh, just collating all the information. And then when the results came out, I had gotten 81% and achieved the second highest rank uh, in the medical school of about 450 people and she achieved um, 68% um, which was around about the average score for the cohort um, and missed, uh, missed the honours grade that she was aiming for um, which she was quite upset. So how did our study strategies differ? We all we went through the same content and we thought that we were both reviewing that content um, and applying it. So where could she have done better? And where did I do well? A lot of you might say, oh, Samed, he's just a genius. And, you know, he's just a prodigy. and He just remembered everything like that. And that's actually what people thought at the time. But the truth is, I'm nowhere near a genius. Um, all I do is follow a method. And that method is reproducible to anyone including you watching this at home. Um, so there's not much to it. I really just implemented two things, um, and that is active recall and spaced repetition. Okay, so where did the differences come? Well, before she did her PBL second, session during the week where you go and you answer the questions, she used to write everything down onto a piece of paper and essentially it would be almost like rewording the contextual knowledge from a textbook. We had a pretty big textbook because uh, we were all scared of neurosciences so we went and found the thickest neuroscience textbook that we could find which is called Candles. Uh, principles of neurosciences which pff, I mean <laughs> that thing was a brick um, so she used to write down highlight and then review the notes things that she'd written and what I used to do was I used to look back at the questions that we created at the beginning of the week and I used to think 
can I answer each of these with a sufficient degree of simplicity, depth, and breadth, okay? And if there was one question, let's say, that I couldn't, and I'd forgotten some of the information, I would go back to the original reference and then find that again. So rather than having to spend time writing things out, I would spend time recalling that information. A lot of the most recent studies on learning show that you actually learn things much better when you pull them out from your brain more frequently rather than trying to stuff as much in there as possible and seeing what sticks, which is the way that most people go about learning things. Now, I'm not saying that from a competitive perspective, but I want you to be able to use your time in the most optimal way and be able to make learning easier rather than harder. So then when it came to the actual study session, we would both go along, both try and cooperate as much as we can, and then we would bring things back, maybe new questions from the session, um, and, and hopefully try and find answers to those. Now what she used to do is leave it there and start looking to the next week, but what I used to do is I used to take the newer questions and go and find the answers to them. And then every around half term, I used to go back on all of the questions from the initial four weeks um, and, and see if I could remember what the answers were. And again, I would reference the original material where there were gaps in my knowledge. And that would keep all of the information fresh for when we would be tested on it at the end of the semester. But what she would be doing is going back through her old notes and trying to remember all of the bits and pieces that she'd written down, which were kind of quite a significant amount of text. It's, it would basically be like going and reviewing the in, original text from, from the brick book. That's <laughs> what, what we should be calling it. So when it came to the exam, I had a much more working understanding of the topic. Um, and I could explain it very easily because I was placing things in the right boxes which, which really tested what your understanding was um, and not just your memory of the content itself. Those two things are very different. Um, and there's something called the Feynman technique, which I mentioned in a previous video uh, when I was talking about my strategy for the upcoming exam, which basically says that you need to be able to explain something as complex as it is, like it were to a child. And that only then when you can do that, have you fully understood the topic. Um, and that doesn't mean just explaining things using you know, language that you would understand, but also maybe discovering the proof behind the concept. Keep asking why, 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 the way a toddler would keep asking. And then eventually you will boil things down to the first principles and, and really have a deep, thorough understanding. And you cannot go wrong if you follow that technique. So we've talked quite a lot about active recall. So let's move on to spaced repetition and how you might be able to apply this method um, using different apps. See, I did very well in that exam, got 81% in the neuroscience module, the basic sciences, um, but there was still a lot I could have done to improve the way that I learned. And I had basically just been reviewing things based on the questions that I had, but I hadn't actually made a list of the information in a more detailed way. Sometimes questions that would arise that I wouldn't necessarily make a note of, I would just think about them. But looking back, by formalizing the plan with documenting just the questions, I could 
really have a much more broad understanding of the topic and I'm sure I would have performed even better on the exams. So the so what ways could I document those things? I'm going to give you three different ways that you you could apply this using different apps. So the current thing that I'm using is called Anki and it's basically a flashcard app and what you do is you open up your flashcards and you record a question and an answer. Um, I've got other videos on how to use Anki so I can you, you can go watch those if you want or you can even watch another YouTube video that explains how to use it. It's very simple. Um, and then the flashcards will automatically pop up for you to do again throughout the different periods where you would be most likely to forget the information. Um, and that's based on different studies and the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve, basically, which means that the more often you review information, the less likely you will be to actually forget it. All you have to do is, let's say, you know, if you go into this deck and you press study now, um, it can give you the question that you've put there for yourself and you can try and answer it mentally by retrieving whatever information that you've got in there. Like for example, this says, what is the management of confirmed gonococcal infection? And I know that it's intramuscular keftriaxone. And if the patient is refusing um, that medication, then you know it goes on to second line therapy um, with let's say you know azithromycin and one other medication which I can't remember so we'll show the answer and let's say okay so it's ciprofloxacin can be given yeah so the other one was kefixine um, assuming that you don't have sensitivities so then you can say okay um, well I didn't fully know the answer to this so I'm gonna press again and then it's going to show me up this another time so that I can review and then uh, fully implement that knowledge, uh, make sure it's there ready so that when I'm tested on it, I, um, have, I can recall that much easier. Uh, the other way that you can do this is by using an app called Notion. So I've just created um, this example of how you would use it. I haven't actually started using it like this, but this is a method that, um, let's say Ali Abdal um, and Karma Medic both um, support. So basically you would, let's say, organize things as questions. So, you know, let's say you, you've got different specialties here like neurology, cardiology, anatomy, pharmacology. Um, and I'm just using medicine as an example. You could do this with basically any educational field. Um, and then you can split it up into subgroups using these toggle functions. Um, and you could say, right, what is the gross structure of the brain? And then you could, let's say, add um, a diagram here of you know, the neuroanatomy. You can talk about the two cerebrums and the cerebellum um, and the different areas. You could even go into more detail and talk about uh, tracts like corticospinal tract, spinal thalamic, uh, etc. Um, and you can just keep doing that um, and create hundreds and hundreds of questions. Um, some you can answer, some you don't even need to have the answers for. That's the beauty about living in the current day and age is that we're not information deficient because you know you've got the internet, you've got textbooks, you've got lecture notes, you've so all the info is there and it's usually quite well structured. So what is the point really in rewriting information that already exists? It, it's, it can be a waste of time. Um, and lots of people fall into the trap of spending all their time writing out easily accessible information. So it's better to figure out if you actually fully know the information. So. The first thing you need to do is not deceive yourself um, and, and think that you know something just because you have written it down um, before. And, and I, I've made that mistake many times before, so um, I can tell you that based on experience. So that's Notion uh, and Anki. And the other thing that you could do, it's very crude, but you could just record your questions in a Word document 
and as soon as you review them you can color code them so let's say if you didn't know what the answer to a question was you can put it as red if you knew it really easily you could put it as green um, and if you knew it half half you could put it as yellow and then when you come to starting formal dedicated study time for an exam you can go back over all the questions um, and uh, look through them one by one prioritizing bits that you know less than others and that way you're really doing high yield study because you are targeting your weakest points like the red zones rather than just the green zones and reading through things um, that you already know which is much easier and we much prefer spending our time doing that but if you're not working yourself hard then usually that means you're not forming new neural connections and you're not learning um, new things and so your scores on the exams won't change. So I hope this video is helpful for you. Utilize those methods, choose one that you want, you think would work for you. Um, I would go for either you know Anki, Notion or uh, even a Word document um, and once you implement those into your study schedule it's going to be much more efficient and you're going to be able to spend more time doing the things that are important to you like uh, exercising uh, hanging around with friends um, and you know making food that you enjoy eating uh, so i hope that's been useful to you if it has drop me a comment below and i will see you in the next video go Follow me on social media, I'm active on Instagram, Twitter, so I will see you there. Take care, and all the best.